Please stand and join us in song. This is a new one, so just follow along. In the dark and all alone, growing comfortable, are you too scared to move and walk out of this tomb? Buried underneath the lies that you believe, safe and sound, stuck in the ground, too lost to be found. You're just asleep, and it's time to leave. Come on and rise up, take a breath, you're alive now. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us out from the grave like Lazarus? You're brand new, the power of death couldn't hold you. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us out from the grave like Lazarus? Rise up, rise up, rise up, out from the grave like Lazarus. When he said your name, the thing that filled your veins was more than blood. It's the kind of love that washes sin away. Now the door is open wide and the stone's been rolled aside. The old is gone, the light has come. So come on and rise up. Take a breath, you're alive now. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us? Out from the grave like Lazarus, you're brand new. The power of death couldn't hold you. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us? Out from the grave like Lazarus. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Out from the grave like Lazarus. He's calling us to walk out of the dark. He's given us new resurrected hearts. He's calling us to walk out of the dark. He's given us new resurrected hearts. Oh, come on and rise up. Take a breath, you're alive now. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us? Out from the grave like Lazarus, you're brand new. The power of death couldn't hold you. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us? Out from the grave like Lazarus. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Out from the grave like Lazarus. Rise up. Rise up, rise up, out from the grave like Lazarus. Hey Amen. How'd you guys like that one? That's a new song. And we had to bring that out because we're going to hear about Lazarus today. Yeah. So, like we told you, we try to fit the scripture as best we can. And sometimes there is a song that just screams at us that we've got to do it. So... Welcome. We have got a guest preacher today who we'll introduce in a minute. And we welcome you here, whether you're in the sanctuary or out online. It's going to be a beautiful day. I can already feel it. So some sunshine coming. And we're going to continue in worship. Um, we're going to slow it down a little bit. We pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's 
catch your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you, holy. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. And great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out. in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing be seated. Good morning. Welcome to Bethany Church. My name is Sad Daly. Here are some announcements. Welcome Leslie Chumbaple preaching this morning here at Bethany Church. Tuesday, March 28, turn into 30 pieces of silver online time of Bible and prayer. At 7 p.m., access Facebook Bethany Columbia presenter Jim Winner. Wednesday, March 29, Coffee and Devotion, hosted by Steve and Lisa Bromley, 8.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. at Proving Ground Cafe at 180 Columbia Center Drive in Columbia. Everyone is welcome. Wednesday, March 29th, Church Council meeting at 6.30 p.m. Opportunities on the connection table located outside Sanctuary. Sign ups. Sign up to volunteer for sword dinners the second Wednesday of each month at Bethany's from 6 to 7 p.m. So social outlets for adult regulation. Sign up to be a member of the New Bethany Church. Sign up to help to work with work on the New Bethany Church. Also, outside the sanctuary, pick up a bag of plaza, plastic Easter eggs to fill with candy, then bring them back to church now, between now and Easter. Thank you. Monday, April 3rd, trustees meeting at 6.30 p.m. Sunday, April 9th, Easter Sunday worship service at 10 a.m. Easter egg hunt at 11 a.m. Kim Daly will be available immediately after the worship this morning to answer questions about the disaffiliation process. Enjoy worship. Good morning again. Oh, that was so nice. Um, would you all join me in prayer, please? 
Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today so grateful for all that you give us every day. We're especially thankful for this church family. What a blessing to worship and praise you with this loving fellowship of brothers and sisters. Be with us as we continue on our new journey together. Let us always choose the path that brings us closer to you. Lord, we ask that you be with all of those who are in special need of your care right now. Comfort Mary and her family as they mourn the loss of Russ. Let us, as Mary's church family, be her strength in these difficult times. May all the reminders around the church of Russ's handiwork forever remind us of his commitment to Bethany's ministry to you, O Lord. Lastly, we pray for our country. The world we are currently living in is not worthy of your kingdom. Help us to avoid the distractions of this sinful world and concentrate on becoming closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Bethany boys and girls. (laughs) So in the book of Psalm, David asked God a question. Or not a question, he put a request in. He said, Put my tears in a bottle. Comes from Psalm 56, 8. Well, I brought along a little bottle of tears this morning. Now you're probably thinking, those aren't tears. They aren't. They're both. It's water. But when I look at this, it reminds me of the real tears that all of us have shed. Think about that. Have you cried before? Yeah. I've got a few reasons you might cry. How about when you fall down and you get hurt? Do you cry? Yeah, if it's bad enough, I cry. Yeah, Luca cries. I'm glad to hear that. You cry. Yep. (laughs) Do you cry when you're sad? No. Oh, I do. I cry when I'm sad. How about if somebody hurts your feelings? I've cried. I'll admit. And then the last one, which I think I know everybody has, you cry when you see someone else crying. That's me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, did you know that in the Bible, Jesus wept three times that we're aware of. And Jesus wept is the shortest verse in the Bible from John eleven thirty five. Let me tell you when he wept. Excuse me. So the Bible tells us that Jesus cried when he prayed for others. This comes from Hebrews 5, 7. While Jesus was here on earth, he offered prayers and pleadings with a loud cry and tears. And the Bible also tells us Jesus cried when he saw what people were missing out. He cried this on his very last earthly trip to Jerusalem. And it comes from Luke 19, 41 and 42. I wish that even today you would find the way of peace, but now it is too late. The peace is hidden from you. And then the last time he cried, he had some friends, Mary and Martha, and their brother Lazarus. The sisters had summoned him to their home because Lazarus, their brother, was ill. And in the meantime, Lazarus did die. And when Jesus got there, he saw Mary weeping. Jesus wept. He wept with her. And then the most amazing thing happened. Jesus and the sisters and a group of friends and family traveled to where Lazarus was in the tomb. Jesus asked them to roll the stone away, and then he called in, Lazarus, come out. And you know how it ends. He came out. So Mary's tears turn from sadness to probably tears of joy. So remember, when you cry, God is watching. He sees it, and he's with you when you're hurt. So let's pray this morning. Dear Jesus, it is comforting to know that when we do cry, you cry with us. 
but it's even more comforting to know that you have power over death and the grave, and that one day we will be in heaven with you, and there will be no more tears. In your name, amen. All right, so we're going to move on to our offering. The ways to give are on the wall. There we go. There are offering plates in the back of the sanctuary. We do appreciate your support of Bethany and the ministries. Um, but we do have a special guest today preaching. She is not a stranger to us. She has been here before. Um, she did a Q&A with us um, here in the sanctuary, and then she preached in the park um, when we did our, our service in the park. And so she is also going to deliver our message today. So we welcome Leslie up to deliver our sermon today. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, yes, my name is Leslie Shalopney, and you all are gracious enough to have sponsored me through my candidacy and becoming an elder in the United Methodist Church. And I did get an appointment this year. I'll be the lead pastor at Sparta United Methodist starting in July. So thank you all very much for your role that you played and all the support that you've given. Um, so let's go ahead and read our scripture first. And you guys can stand with me, if you will. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Anyone who lives in me and believes in me will never, ever die. Well, I want it. You guys go to sit, sorry. <laughs> the word of God for the people of God. <laughs> I forget what I'm doing here. Um, well, I want you to think back. We're going to do a little fun survey here. I want you to think back when you were a kid and think of some of the things that you believed. Just for fun, if you believed one of these, go ahead and raise your hand up high. If you ever believed that if you swallowed a watermelon seed, that one was gonna start growing in your stomach. I know I had friends that believed that. If you crossed your eyes for too long, that they get stuck that way. That your blanket, that almighty blanket could protect you from anything. When you left your bedroom, you were certain that some of your toys came to life. This one made me laugh. People in Australia lived upside down. <laughs> that you need to run and jump on the couch because it's the only place that's safe because the floor was lava. And who didn't believe this one? I know you said it a hundred times. If you stepped on a crack, you'd break your mother's back. There was definitely sharks at the end of the deep end of the pool. L M N O P was the letter that comes after K. I'll give you a second on that one. If you focus just hard enough on that object across the room, I think I can make it move with my mind. I know some of you tried it. You just don't want to admit it. You know you tried to make something move with your mind. And finally, how many of you ran at full speed the second you flipped your bedroom light off and jumped as far as you could into your bed under the covers so that nothing would get you? You had to make a running start, right? So as we grow, we mature in what we believe, of course, and things change in what we believe. But what we believe is the basis of our thoughts, our actions, our decisions, our behavior, how we live our lives, how we lead others, and even how we love others. Our beliefs are the fundamental framework that we use to engage in the world around us. And this framework is ultimately built on the foundation of what we believe or even don't believe about God. John, the writer of this gospel, has the goal in writing to us but he hides a statement to the very end. You know how your teacher used to make you write a thesis statement, but it had to be at the beginning of your paper? He hides his at the end. At verse 20, 31, it says, But these things are written, meaning all the things that John wrote throughout the gospel, all the signs that he describes that point to Jesus, all of the evidence, all that is written, so that you will believe that Jesus is the Christ, the God's Son, and that believing you will have life in his name. 
Belief plays a big part in John's gospel. John understands that we believe what we believe is important, that the life Jesus offers isn't in the future, but in the here and now. He takes the whole book and gives us signs that point to Jesus one after the other. Jesus turns water into wine, the healing of the official son in Cana, healing of a paralytic, multiplying of fishes and loaves, walking on water, and healing a blind man, which I know you talked about last week. So Jesus didn't just tell them who he was, he showed them. Last week you talked about the Pharisees being willfully blind, spiritually blind, refusing to see what was literally right in front of them and believe. Jesus taught and performed signs openly, but the Pharisees just couldn't get there. Today we will hear about the greatest sign of them all, an act that was inconceivable. After the sign, there would be no doubt of who Jesus was and why he walked on the earth. A sign that was the tipping point, the pivot point for the Pharisees, deciding once and for all they were done with Jesus and he had to be stopped. In John 11, we read that Jesus was approached by a messenger. Jesus' dear friend Lazarus was very sick, and his sisters Mary and Martha sent him a message for Jesus to come. Do you hear the unspoken request? Do you hear their belief and their faith? Jesus, come and heal our brother. If you would just be here, you could heal him. There's no doubt. Come, he is sick. You are needed here and now. Jesus loves Mary and Martha and Lazarus, but he chose to stay and not leave immediately for their house. The waiting must have been agonizing for Mary and Martha. Did the messenger make it on time? Jesus was only a day away. What was holding him up? Why was he not here yet? After two days, Jesus decided to leave for Bethany to head to Mary and Martha. When Jesus and the disciples got close, they learned Lazarus had already been dead for four days. Lazarus was dead before the message even arrived to Jesus. Jesus missed everything. He missed the funeral, the memorial, all those types of services. It was over with. Four days, Lazarus was dead. Martha heard Jesus was coming and rushed out to meet him on the road on the way into the village. Lord, if you had only been here, my brother would not have died. A grieving Martha just lets it all out. If only, if only you would have been here. Martha is open and honest with Jesus. This statement is loaded with belief in his abilities, but at the same time loaded with regret and disappointment, grief, possibly anger. If only. Martha wrestles with her conflicting feelings, and she is so much like us. Jesus, what should have, Jesus you should have been here. She is angry and upset and trying to cling to whatever faith that she might have left in this moment. And if you recall, there are other stories of Jesus visiting his friends, Mary and Martha. And a lot of times, Martha doesn't get the best rap, does she? But today, Martha sees clearly. In verses 21 and 22, she says to Jesus, Lord, if you'd only been here, my brother would have not died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask. What amazing faith that is. Another unspoken request belief that Jesus can still save, that somehow, who knows how, all this pain and all this sorrow could be turned to joy, even hope. Verse 23 to 26, Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Martha at this point now gives her best Sunday school answer. Yes, Martha said, he will rise when everyone else rises the last day. But this is not what she wanted to hear right now in a time of crisis. This wasn't comforting. Jesus, you are not here. You were not here and he died. We needed you here. Jesus looks at Martha and he says something to her so profound. I am the resurrection and I am the life. Let that sit in for a moment. Jesus embodied, I am the resurrection and the life. 
I am a living embodiment of a here and now resurrection, a here and now bringing back to life what you thought was dead, a here and now restoration, a here and now fully abundant life. I bring hope to the here and the now. I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes, the one who places their trust in me, will live even after dying. Everyone who believes in me will never, ever die. How could an already overwhelmed Martha possibly comprehend and take in all of this information? Jesus sees the pain, the confusion, but he asks, Do you believe this, Martha? Yes, Lord, she told her told him she must have been thinking I don't understand this I don't know why you were not here I don't know why this bad thing happened but I do truly believe I have always believed you are the Messiah the son of God the one who has come into this world from God in this time of uncertainty she went back and held on to the truth that she knew she was certain of that Jesus is the Messiah the son of God Martha went and got Mary, and Mary left so fast to go see Jesus. All of the guests that were there mourning with them and supporting them, they thought she was running out to Lazarus' grave. They followed her. So now there's a crowd of onlookers, and Mary and Martha join Jesus on the outside of the village. Verse 32. When Mary arrived and saw Jesus, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. If only. She believes Jesus could have. I wish we were able to see the expression on her face and the tone of her voice. Was this a plea? Was this an accusation? If only Jesus had been there, but he wasn't. We have the same feelings. The honest response of both Mary and now Martha is how we feel at times of great sorrow and loss when we don't know what to do next. When all seems utterly lost, when we have nowhere to turn and it's just too much to bear. And I want to let you know that if you need permission, you have it. It's okay to lay it all out on Jesus when we are suffering, when we're hurting, when you seemingly have nowhere to turn. These are honest, raw, and real feelings of these women. And if anyone can handle it, Jesus can. Where have you put him? Jesus asked. They told him, Lord, come and see. They get to the tomb, and Jesus wept. Jesus shared in their grief the overwhelming weight of pain and loss, fear and tears in that moment. Jesus weeps with the people that are hurting and crushed. He steps into this very human moment and weeps. He shares in their pain and their loss. And we sadly know this place. But we often do not recognize it as a place that is inhabited with Jesus. Jesus stands outside the tomb of Lazarus, and he stands with us too in our time of need. The crowd sees Jesus' reaction and tears and wonders, and he, why did he not come earlier? If only. If only he had come earlier, he could have healed Lazarus and saved him. He gave a sight, a sight to a blind man. If only. They don't doubt Jesus' ability again or his power. They just couldn't see big enough. So from this point on, no one expected what would happen next. Jesus told them, roll the stone aside. I'm betting you could have heard an audible gasp, a pin drop at the disbelief of what Jesus had just asked them to do. Now, Martha tried to talk him out of it. He goes, Jesus, it's been four days. The smell. Jesus, we can't do this. But Jesus looked right at Martha and said, remember what I told you. They rolled the stone aside, and Jesus looks up to heaven, and he prays, and he commands, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, hands and feet bound in cloths, his face wrapped in a head cloth, Jesus told him, unwrap him and let him go. The crowd didn't expect a dead man to walk out of the tomb. Death is final. 
and irreversible, and there is no remedy. But Jesus bends the laws of creation and does something incomprehensible in the here and the now. Life in the here and now. The people present that witness, the people present at the witness Lazarus, now the walking and the breathing and the alive Lazarus, come out of the tomb and they believed. Jesus brings life out of death in the here and the now. Jesus speaks and it comes to be. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the living embodiment of the here and now resurrection, the here and now bringing back to life what you thought was dead, the here and now restoration of what you thought was broken, the here and now fully abundant life that you can live, and I bring hope to what you thought was hopeless in the here and now. I am the resurrection and the life. And he asks, do you believe? We so often live life in the if-only moments. Jesus is, still in the, it's, Jesus is still in the resurrection, the restoration, and the bringing back to life business in the here and now. Today, today, the here and now. We don't have to wait for some time in the future. Jesus restores and sets us free from all that holds us back now. We are given the freedom from all that binds us and keeps us tied up, but we are not just set free from something, but to something. We are set free from shame and guilt and fear and hurt and bitterness and all those things that separate us from God in order to live an unhindered life for God, to let nothing stop us or get in the way of what God has called us to do, to love others as God loves us, to serve others without a hesitation, to bring our cares, our worries, and our fears before God in, need, a, time, in a time of need, to embrace life in all of its beauty and joy and uncertainty. When we are confronted with Jesus, we need to make a decision. Do we believe? Do we believe Jesus is restoring in the here and the now? That Jesus sets us free in the here and the now? Belief looks like this. When you hear your name being called, you answer the one who knows you and loves you, the one who walks with you in your grief, the one who stands with you and weeps with you in your pain, the one who can set you free, the one who can heal you, the one who can forgive you, the one who can make you you whole. Believe and you are able to walk out of that tomb unbound and set free. Jesus brings life out of death and sets us free to live an unhindered life for God. I am the resurrection and I am the life. In the here and the now, do you believe? Please take a moment and pray with me. Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life. Show us those areas that you would want to bring back to life in the here and now. Show us areas that you want to heal and that you want to restore. Free us from what holds us back to live an unhindered life for you. Here and now. And please join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, we're going to have you guys stand and join us in our last song. See why we picked Lazarus, the song at the beginning? It's great. All right. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world that he
the Father, praise Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory, great things He has done. O perfect redemption, the purchase of again, Leslie, for delivering our message today. That was great. And uh, you're all dismissed. Go in peace. Have a great week. Amen. Just a reminder, Kim is going to be here to answer some questions if you all want to stick around for a couple minutes. Still kind of early, isn't it? <laughs> that, that's okay. Thank you, Leslie. I'm sure we'll uh, enjoy that beautiful weather here in just a little bit. If you'd uh, all like to, if you have questions or want to hear an update,